need to get another. <coughs> no more coughing or hacking. <laughs> so, disclaimer for this video, I may or may not intermittently cough uncontrollably, and I apologize we'll, for that. We'll try to now. edit it out. <laughs> So, hey everybody, I'm Garrett. And I'm Carolyn. And we're from Diary of a Family. And today we just kind of wanted to go over, I guess, a little bit about our family. And, and kind of tell you a little bit about who we are, what we believe in, and where we're going in the future. Um, I'll try and do my best, but I'm also driving, so um, I will try and talk as I can. Um, anyway, so... If you've watched some of our videos before, you know that uh, we have three kids. Um, Emma is six, Timothy is four, and Edison is one. Just turned one. Just turned one. And, and we homeschool our kids. I have liked to be more involved in the past, and then I took another position at work, and I am less involved now. However, I do plan all of our curriculum, and then Garrett interacts with Emma on a daily basis education part done and yeah. then I check up with them at the end of the week how she's doing so I guess you could consider me a full-time dad um, I do own my own business kind of building it up um, I own a uh, stage and theatrical lighting company and I do basically everything from consulting to product sales and installation and training and all kinds of stuff with the lighting so um, it kind of afforded us the opportunity to kind of try a new business and try a different role um, it's been definitely interesting there have been pluses and minuses to learning how to be a parent especially when you're just all of a sudden hey you are now the parent and here's three kids <laughs> well you started out with two kids two years ago True. So you've been doing this for a good two years now, and yeah. I think you're doing a fantastic job. Yes, there are days that I come home from work and you're frazzled, and I can tell it, but I mean, when I was a stay-at-home parent, you would come home from work, and I'd be the frazzled one. So it just is par for the course of being a parent of three littles. Yeah, um, sometimes you do have to take a chisel and take them off the ceiling <laughs> and sit them uh, with a belt and strap them into a chair so they'll eat and stay there. Uh, Yes, our little jumping bean daughter won't stay in one place for more than five minutes. Sometimes but not even that. She's active. So I work full time for a hospital in the area. I was a nurse on the floor and now I've taken up a new position called a clinical resource specialist. And I still hold my RN licensure and what I do is I manage um, education for the staff on the unit, uh, be it new equipment that comes on the unit or uh, a new resident or a new uh, employee who is learning the system and learning how we care for our patients in the workflow or even um, uh, maybe someone who's been a nurse or a CNA for a while and is just not quite following the protocols etc. Um, I can follow up with them and see if there's uh, any barriers that are keeping them from uh, following the protocols. Uh, this way we can keep our patients safe, we can um, give better quality care because they have access to me, a resource to them to answer questions and fill them in on what's new and what is being tossed out. So yeah, that's in a nutshell. In a nutshell, I'm an educator. <laughs> so it's definitely an, a different area of nursing. It's kind of interesting to see nursing from different areas. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, for most of her career up until this new position, she has been on the floor, which means on her feet, mm -hmm. running around, sometimes sounded like a chicken with their head cut off <laughs> the majority of the time. And long shifts, 12, long shifts, 12 hours long, 13 yep. hours sometimes. Yep. And so it's kind of nice to have someone that come home that's not like, I'm so exhausted I can't even move. And then, you know, there's other challenges and other things that are like, Ugh, you know, my back and this and that. You know, but they're all things that it's just adjusting to the new position. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. Um, so I've been trying to do four 10-hour shifts, and that allows me to uh, come home and help him put the kids to bed. Before, I was doing three 12-hour shifts, and I would leave before the kids got up and would come back before the kids uh, after the kids went to bed. Um, so it was really difficult because if I worked two or three shifts in a row, that would be three, four days that um, I wouldn't be seeing the kids at all. Um, so it's nice in that respect, but then it means that I have less days off. And yeah. so we have to cram as much as we can into our weekend days. And that can be a little difficult. Yeah. So probably end of next year, we'll be looking at kind of transitioning our family a little bit. Um, with Carolyn's position, it has opened up a lot of other opportunities um, as far as being able to go other places and see, um, work other places for Carolyn as a nurse. Um, and so starting next year, we're going to actually start working on getting our house ready to sell because we kind of want to try a mobile lifestyle for a while. We definitely at least want to pare down on our belongings mm -hmm. and kind of live a more minimalistic life, which would then be um, so much easier to up and leave a three bedroom, um, one and a half bath house and move into a small uh, trailer, fifth wheel, something like that. Yeah. So. It'll be interesting to see the transition. We've already kind of started a few things. If you look through our channel, you'll see that we did a project um, for our fireplace. Mm, that's um, most recent. That's yeah, most recent. We've done a lot of painting for a couple of rooms and other things. Um, and then you'll have seen videos of projects that I've gone through, cleaning spots and kind of um, getting rid of a lot of stuff and minimizing our spaces but that is a huge project and oh my gosh it's gonna take me months and months and months I mean it's years of stuff in our house yeah so uh, it's 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 definitely work in progress they say the average home in America has over 300,000 items <laughs> in it and that's I mean you count every little q-tip and all that kind of, you know every little tiny item that's, that's three, a lot of stuff that's a lot of stuff and I, I remember when we moved from the house when we just got married to the house we bought I think we had our house all packed up and loaded up in like we had a, it loaded up in like half an hour right we had everything packed days in advance yep. all labeled in boxes but we were going from what 900 square feet if that but it was 900 it, square feet just the two of us and a baby yep um, and now we have a six, what is it, 1,630 feet house and just six years of accumulation. Yeah. So, uh. And it's not even that we're that much, that we buy a ton of stuff. We really but, don't. Uh, no, we've get, been but given a lot of stuff. We've been stuff. given a lot. And, you know, I've always been one to use and reuse and, um, you know, Kids probably have three items that are new clothes. <laughs> Everything else is everything's been hand -me -down. everything's been hand-me-downs, um, right? So we don't purchase a lot of new things. But I feel like I've been a bit of a hoarder at times, thinking, well, what if, what if we need this? And what if we need that? And and I don't want to mm -hmm. have to go out and buy it. I have it here. Let's just store it. And so we have bins of stuff and and. Uh, I mean, books in the garage that we haven't even gotten out for the kids to read. So why do we even have them? Yeah. So definitely interesting. We kind of feel that it'd be nice to to go see other places. Um, that's one thing that we're really wanting to focus on in the next couple of years. Um, is more educating, you know, yes, with textbooks and things like that, but also with experiences. Mm, hands on and doing. Kids were fascinated. Fascinated. We were when we were in Hawaii. Fascinated by the lagoons. They were fascinated by just all everything. How different it was. Yeah, definitely check out our um, playlist of our trips to our trip to Hawaii. But also, when I when I was younger, I've done a lot of traveling uh, with my previous job and with when I was a teenager. So. There's a lot of different states and a lot of different places that I've seen. And there's there's people in my area that 
Oh uh, yeah, I have barely even left the county. <laughs> you know, I've been here, you know, it's 55 years and I've never left the county. I'm like, that's such so sad. There's a lot to see. There's a lot to see. There's the, I mean, you can drive, drive an hour and go up into the mountains, go to the other side of the mountains. And you can drive an hour and go to the ocean. Well, it might be a little longer. <laughs> a then. little longer than that. But what, what we're trying to get at is that there's so many opportunities to go see. Even locally, yeah. Yeah, and so I think for us, we kind of re would really love to be able to share that love of traveling and seeing other things and I want to catch up and make sure that I get to as many states if not more than him yeah it might be hard because <laughs> I've done uh, about 30 35 <laughs> states so anyways uh, right now we're about we're heading out to do some Christmas shopping finish the last few items we need to get um, what does Christmas shopping entail when you are paring down and minimizing well, not much. Not much. So it makes me happy. <coughs> uh, for me, not so much, but it's just just me. I, mean, I do know. not like to shop. It's um, just kind of something that I never liked to do when I was a kid because um, you, got, you got more traits from your grandma than most anything <laughs> else. Um, I think it stems from when I was a kid, my folks didn't have a lot of money, and so I didn't have a lot of money. There was no, um, there was no earning money. There was no allowance for me, so I, I had very little money to work with. And we learned to make gifts, and we learned um, to just be very frugal. Yeah. And so I've never actually enjoyed going into a store and even browsing. Mm -hmm. I have to like know the item I want, know how much it's going to cost, have a you know have a budget to work with, and just walk in, and get it, it, and to walk the out. committee and have it approved <laughs> by the committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have learned in our marriage to loosen up and be a little bit more free spirit with the money. And yeah. Garrett has um, gotten some good experience with forming a budget, sticking with it, and not spending money on things yeah. we don't actually need. Well, and another another benefit of us changing lifestyles is that um, with what the value of our house is and some of the things we want to do to the house, we'll actually be able to be completely out of debt with no mortgage, no credit card, no any other loans or anything else. Um, and be able to buy a trailer and a and a truck outright. So that's kind of one of the other reasons we're kind of looking at doing this is kind of to reset our finances. Not that we're going to just stay mobile for mm -hmm. the rest of our lives. We're probably looking at buying a house, you know, in a couple of years. Yeah. But this will allow us to find an area that we like. You know, whether it's where we're at, maybe somewhere else, maybe more in the country, or find an area that we really like somewhere else in the country. Yeah. So there's really not much. I mean, we have family up here, but they're all an hour or more away. And so for us, we've never been like too reliant on family. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had, you know, my siblings, a lot of them Move out of state. moved out of state. Yeah. Um, and with your siblings, most of them, minus Christy. Uh, one or two uh, have started to spread out. I yeah. have a brother who's moved a couple states away. But the majority of them are like within nowhere. a 20, 30 minute radius. Most of them, yeah. Um, so. so, you know, downsizing to a trailer is just the main focus is it's going to reach one of our goals as a couple of becoming financially out of debt and stable. Um, yeah. I mean, and it's not that we have a lot of debt. It's and just we're the fairly, house. We're considered really. Would probably be considered stable compared to some people, most right? People we don't. In we don't hold credit card debt. Both of our cars we own outright. It's yeah. just the mortgage on the house that we like to be in that place where, like your grandparents, we can also do the same thing for for maybe our kids to, in the future, yeah. where we have the money just sitting around per se. Um, to say, hey, you need a couple thousand dollars. All right, here it is. Pay me back when you can. Yep. Um, you know, to be a blessing financially. Yeah. 
anyways we are gonna go get some lunch and uh, might catch up in a little bit so is it good yeah what are you eating it's called the popper the popper it's a jalapeno and cream cheese burger with bacon and uh, hopefully it'll clear up my uh, your sinuses uh -huh. your throat yeah yeah it looks really good Thank you. I think our vegetables are going to end up being a dollar more, but it's totally worth it to get something like that. Because, I mean, the only other kind of sort of healthy thing on their list for um, sides was going to be coleslaw, and that's just a filler with mayo. <laughs> so, asparagus, yummy. I'm going to dig into mine. Um, mine is a salami grinder, I think, something like that. Anyway, it's got all kinds of salami, genoa, mozzarella cheese, and then it was all like um, baked in their wood fire grill. And of course, it's a pizza sandwich, yes. So that's what I'm gonna embark on here. So we're in the process of buying tickets. Yes, please. Can get anything else for you guys? Nope, I think we're good. Thank you. So we're in the process of buying tickets for tonight's uh, zoo lights. We're members of the local zoo, and they have the entire zoo covered in Christmas lights right now, and they open it up for a small fee to go and see it decorated at night. I am excited. I haven't been ever before and we haven't told the kids we're going yet so hopefully it'll work out and hopefully it won't be too cold tonight. Excuse the gum. What do you think of our uh, late lunch slash? It was a good restaurant. Yeah. JP's Tap Room and, and grill. grill. I love the fact that they had an option for veggies and it wasn't just like, oh, broccoli and carrots and there you go. It did cost an extra dollar. However, it was fresh asparagus. It was good asparagus. And they gave us the option of how we wanted it. Yep. We could have eaten it fresh, grilled, steamed, however we wanted it. And they grilled it for us. So awesome. So awesome. So, uh, four star, five star? Definitely five star. Five star. It was worth the extra money that we put into it. So. I think we usually limit ourselves to just over $40 for a meal. Yep. And in the end, this was just over $50. So it was worth the extra $10. So we are uh, heading to get a few presents real quick. And then get the kids. Bundle them some, up. Bundle them up, throw some food down their gullets. <laughs> and whisk them off to go see Zoo Lights. A winter Which wonderland. Will most likely be a completely separate video. <laughs> I am so excited because really we haven't been able to do anything um, Christmassy. Christmassy yet with the kids because I've either been working or we decided not to decorate uh, for a certain family reason yeah. um, until after the 11th. And now that it's after the 11th, we're coming up and this is like the weekend before Christmas and when are we gonna decorate? I don't know. Um, so it might be that we'll just have to decorate a little bit at a time yeah. after I get home from work in the evenings. Um, yeah. And that's usually the worst time to do it with our kids because they get so exhausted by the end of the day that they are... Play crank pots. Crank pots, yes. Quick tip, kids are affected by food and lack of sleep. Half the time when they are at each other's throats or attacking each other or whatever else they are doing, it's because they are either hungry or tired or both. And our kids are no exception. They are definitely at their worst in the evenings before dinner. Yep. Because they're hungry and they're tired. <laughs> what do they call it? Hangry? Hangry, for Hangry. sure. Yeah. I don't suffer from it as much. I but, do. Yes. I do. Just those little things you learn 
as a parent. Our kids function a lot better too if they're kept on a schedule. Yeah. And we don't keep them on a very tight schedule, um, especially around the holiday time. But for sure, they are in bed at the same time every night if we can possibly help it. It's been a little bit harder since the holiday season started because we've wanted to do some things with them and go places and see people. But there's things like the zoo lights and other things that you can't do yeah. before 7 o'clock. You can't just go to the zoo lights at 5 p.m. and just go real quick, go see it, and then get at home and get to bed. And blah, blah. you know, we'll be rushing through it and yeah. it won't be any fun for the kids. So they'll be to bed late tonight. However, it will be worth it, I think. doesn't have to start super early tomorrow which is fantastic yeah so put a comment below what you have done with your kids this holiday season just to make it a little bit extra special